Do you think you're at risk of getting hepatitis B and C? I don't think I'm at, at risk, but you know, I don't really know a lot about it. Some people can catch it from like drinking other people's pops or sharing lunches or some stuff like that. Do you know the risk factors for hepatitis? Dirty needles or sexually transmitted? It may be hard to believe, but one in 12 people around the world is living with hepatitis. In Canada, hepatitis B and C affects as many as 600,000 people, and many of them don't even know it. Dr. Jenny Heathcote specializes in the treatment of hepatitis. Both hepatitis B and C are, for the most part, silent diseases. That's why it's so important to be checked, particularly if there is a risk factor that has occurred at any time in your life. It could have been 50 or 60 years ago. Most individuals chronically infected with hepatitis C or B have no symptoms for decades. Once symptoms develop due to liver failure and or liver cancer, then of course it's very often too late to treat. Larry Wong, a hepatitis B patient, wants people to know that anyone is at risk of getting hepatitis. I believe I contracted uh, hepatitis B uh, at birth from my mother and uh, I was not aware that I was a hepatitis B carrier until I was 30 in life. Hepatitis B is very poorly understood because not too many people are aware of the rapid advances in Western medicine that would allow the control and management of the effects of the disease so that the person, a patient, could lead an active, healthy lifestyle. Andy Cumming also knows all too well the burden of living with hepatitis C. I got hepatitis C from the infusion products that were used to treat my hemophilia. I had to quit my job in 2003 and uh, prepare myself for the inevitability of a, uh, a liver transplant, which occurred in 2005. World Hepatitis Day is a first step towards uh, increasing the awareness on the part of governments, funding agencies, researchers, the medical community, the population globally to understand uh, just the magnitude of this uh, emerging uh, worldwide health crisis. Canadians living with hepatitis, their families, patient groups, and healthcare professionals are joining together for this initiative to demand that hepatitis B and C receive the attention they deserve as life threatening diseases. Gary Fagan is president of the Canadian Liver Foundation and chair of the Canadian World Hepatitis Alliance. When it comes to availability to treatments for hepatitis, the Canadian system it lags far behind other systems in the world and I think that that is truly an embarrassment. I think that the Canadian government first of all has to acknowledge and recognize that hepatitis B and C is causing a serious health burden in this country. It is leading to chronic disability. It is leading to death in this country. The second thing that the government needs to do is to provide leadership. Part of that leadership needs to come through a much more significant investment in research and treatment consistent with the number of people that are affected by this disease. The Canadian World Hepatitis Day Alliance is asking the government to reduce the health and social impact of hepatitis B and C on Canadians by 2012 by improving access to care, promoting prevention and funding more research and community programs. To find out more, visit worldhepatitisday.org. Sherry Demetarko reporting.